So up until now, we've talked about the idea of efficiency in terms of maximizing the gains from trade or maximizing the size of the economic pie. But let's go ahead and delve into that idea of efficiency a little bit more. The most common way that economists look at efficiency is what's called the idea of Pareto efficiency, which is named after an Italian economist named Pareto. And the idea of Pareto efficiency is that a situation is efficient if there's no way to make anyone better off without making someone else worse off. The idea here is that if there were a way to make someone better off without making anyone else worse off, it would be inefficient to waste that opportunity to help one person without hurting another. So it's a kind of absence of inefficiency. A situation is efficient if there's an absence of inefficiency. So this concept is actually pretty subtle and it's definitely different than just maximizing the size of the economic pie. And one way to look at that is to look at the different scenarios here in this table and try to think about which scenarios are Pareto efficient. So let's suppose we start in scenario A. If we start in scenario A, moving to scenario B makes both Crusoe and Friday better off. Crusoe has gains of 2.5, Friday has gains of 1, they both gain, and so they're both better off. What about B? Is B efficient? No, because when we move from B to C, they also both benefit. So B is also not efficient. What about C? C is efficient. And you want to make sure you realize why. The typical thing that students say is, well, C is efficient because it creates the biggest economic pie. The combined pie is 12, as opposed to lower numbers for all the other things. And that is in part of the explanation. But a deeper explanation is, if we move from C down to D or from C back to A, we hurt one of the two without we hurt one of the two in the process of possibly helping the other. So C is efficient. D is also efficient. And the reason for that is if we start at D, although moving up to C makes Crusoe better off, it makes Friday worse off. So D is also efficient. C and D are both efficient. What about if we start at E? If we start at E, moving to D makes Crusoe better off, but hurts Friday. So starting at E, E is also efficient. F, G, and H are all inefficient. So we have this situation that C, D, and E are all efficient. And notice that this is about as far as we can go in judging the goodness here because essentially Crusoe and Friday are going to have very different opinions possibly about which of C, D, and E is best. Friday presumably is going to prefer E. Crusoe is going to prefer C. So this way of looking at efficiency, we're trying to not take the viewpoint of either of them. We're trying to say in as value neutral of a way, um, a situation is efficient, um, if it's sort of non-wasteful. In terms of the overall economy, one thing to think about here is that several conditions have to hold for the economy to be efficient overall. We looked at the production possibilities frontier model, and we thought about efficiency in terms of the production possibilities frontier model, that if there's no way to get more of one good without giving up some of the other, then we have an efficient situation. So B is not efficient because we could get more of both goods by producing it A. And B would be some kind of situation where some of our productive resources are lying idle, people are unemployed, say for instance, or production is just being organized in a really inefficient way and rice land that's good for growing rice is being used to raise cows and so on and so forth. So B is kind of inefficient in an obvious way. Moving along the production possibilities frontier, 
there is a kind of efficiency judgment that we can make there. If it's true that people would generally prefer a higher level of manufacturers and a lower level of food, that is position C, instead of position A, then it's inefficient to be at A because we're producing the wrong mix of goods. Although we're producing the goods efficiently, we're producing the wrong mix. So a movement from A to C, if C is preferred, is an increase in productive, sorry, allocative efficiency. So that's one, another type of efficiency that we need to have for the economy to be efficient overall. One is, are we producing whatever we're producing in a smart way? That means we're at A rather than B. And then are we producing the right mix of goods? And that's being at C rather than A. Not able to be seen in this particular diagram is the idea of distributive efficiency. So distributive efficiency comes into the question of, given whatever we've produced, when we've allocated it to different people, have we allocated it in a way that there's no way to make anyone better off without making someone else worse off? And to sort of see where this comes into consideration, suppose we had produced some food and we had produced some manufactured goods, and we've given all the food to one person, and they have no manufactured goods, and we've given another person all the manufactured goods but no food. Well, that's pretty obviously inefficient in terms of redistribution because most people would prefer to have some mixture of food and manufactured goods. So they can presumably trade with each other after we've given them their allocation. So that would allow us to elim eliminate the distributive inefficiency of misallocating who got what.